too much pressure. That's my problem. I can't, I can't handle pressure. Sometimes pressure makes me talk different. I'm serious. You ever have like that social pressure? You ever talk to somebody who's fake and they make you fake? Like, they come to you like, hey, how you doing? You're like, fine, how are you? And you're like, I don't even talk like that. I get sick of that shit. I do, it just makes me sick. Sometimes I'll talk crazy just to make myself feel better. You ever do that? Just, just start talking like crazy. Like, you ever hear this voice? Man. Nah. That's, that's how bad guys used to talk in the 40s. In the old days. See, I, used, I talk like that. Not all the time, but if somebody put the pressure on me, fuck it, I gotta, I gotta cut loose. <laughs> like the police pull me over, I'll talk crazy. Son, son, do you know why we pulled you over? <laughs> nah, because I'm black, see, that's right. Nah. <laughs> I do it. It's not illegal to talk like that. How do they know I don't talk like that every day? Stop talking like that. Stop talking like white copper. Nah. That's how I talk, see? You gotta make life interesting like that because the shit is flimsy. Life is flimsy. You, you think you're gonna live forever, but not gonna live forever. It's dangerous out here. We know what's going on. I travel now, you know. I used to think D.C. had the roughest ghettos in the country. Nah, nigga, uh-uh. <laughs> I have seen some shit now. <laughs> oh, there's some rough, rough areas outside of D.C. Yeah, everybody should go to the ghetto. I was taken to the ghetto one time, that's the worst. When you get taken and you're not expecting to go. <laughs> you know, usually you wanna know when you're going to the ghetto, like I'm gonna see some wild shit, I gotta prepare myself, I'm gonna see something crazy. When you're taken, it's different. I had a limousine driver. It was after a show, it was late at night, it was like three in the morning. I had a limousine driver, he was a nice guy, talking to me and shit. Oh, hey, where you from, dog? DC, word. That's a rough city, man. And his cell phone started ringing. Hold on one second. Hello? Oh, what's up, nigga? What? What the fuck? Slow down. What? What the fuck? No! 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 Fuck that, nigga. Fuck it. I'm on my way. Hey. I gotta make a stop real quick at three o'clock in the morning. And I didn't know he was taking me to the ghetto at first. I started looking out the window, I was like, what the fuck, gun store, gun store, liquor store, gun store, where the fuck are you taking me? <laughs> this don't look good. He didn't say shit. He just pulled up in front of an old rickety building that looked like a project. Now, I'd never been there before, I'm not sure if it was a project, but it certainly had all the familiar symptoms of a project. <laughs> a, a, a fucking crackhead ran this way. <laughs> And then, and then another one jumped out of a tree and shit. <laughs> and I said, I'll be right back. <laughs> and left me. Took the keys with him and just left me. <laughs> At three o'clock in the morning, in front of a project, in a fucking limousine. <laughs> this was not good. I was like, man, I gotta look around and see if I can see some landmarks and figure out where I'm at. Might have to escape on foot. Now, this is when I knew I was in a bad neighborhood. You only see this in the worst neighborhoods. Remember, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. I look out the window. It was a fucking baby standing on a corner. <laughs> <Look at this. laughs> and the baby, the baby didn't even look scared. He was just standing there. I mean, it made me sad, it made me sad, really. You know what I mean? Because I wanted to help the baby. <laughs> I was like, mm, I don't trust you either, I'm sorry. Click, <laughs> click. The old baby on the corner trick, eh? I'm not gonna fall for that shit. Where's this limousine driver? You know, I stop feeling bad. As time goes by, I start feeling worse. Like, man, what is wrong with me? What the hell's wrong? I'm scared of a baby. 
I mean, this baby could be in trouble. He might need my help. I got to do something. But I wasn't going to get out the car. I'm serious, man. I just cracked the window a little bit. There's an old limousine. I can roll it down. <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> baby, go home, man. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. What the fuck are you doing up? <laughs> the baby said, I'm selling weed, nigga. I said, oh, shit. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to buy two bags from the coma. Let me get two, let me get two coins. Yeah. Got back in the car and rolled me a joint, man. So, that shit was scary, man. Every once in a while, like a crackhead would come up to the car and look in the window. It was like Jurassic Park and shit. He'd be looking on the car. <laughs> hey, get out of here, cracky. That baby was still standing there, man. Then I started feeling bad again. Yeah, weed make you feel guilty sometimes, you know. Man, what is wrong with me, man? I have just bought weed from, a, from an infant. I can't condone this kind of behavior. What am I thinking? I can't let the fear ruin my morals. Gotta do something. Hey, baby. Stop selling weed, all right? You got your whole life ahead of you. He said, fuck you, nigga, I got kids to feed. I said, God, <laughs> damn. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> and just at that very moment, one of the crackheads was running across the street and got hit by a car. I know it was a hit and run. The police did it. It's all right, they sprinkled some crack on him, he got back up. 